This episode of News Dump is brought to you by HoneyBook. Typically, drunk phone calls are a really bad idea, and they almost certainly won't end up the way that you probably hoped they would, especially when the person on the other end of the call is your boss. Yeah, bad idea. But the ratio of bone-chilling regret and actual success has just been officially skewed by Spider-Man himself, Tom Holland, who might have actually played a larger part in the deal between Disney and Sony over the movie rights for the Spider-Man franchise than we all initially thought. And that is thanks to a drunken phone call between him and Disney CEO Bob Iger earlier this year. During an appearance on the Jimmy Kimmel Show while promoting a new animated movie that he's starring in alongside Will Smith, the one with the pigeons, yeah. he told his story about finding out that Disney and Sony couldn't come to terms regarding the Spider-Man franchise, and that at the time it seemed like he would no longer be involved in the MCU. Here's what he said. We were at D23, which is the big Disney convention, and the news came out, and I was obviously devastated. I was really upset. And all my Marvel friends were there, and they were taking Marvel pictures, and I wasn't allowed to be in them. It was awful. Anyway, I asked if I could get Bob's email, because I just wanted to say thank you. This has been an amazing five years of my life. Thank you for changing my life in the best way, and I hope that we can work together in the future. And I got his email. I sent him the email, and then he responded very quickly, saying, I'd love to jump on the phone with you at some point when you're free. He continued... You don't give Bob Iger a schedule. You're just like, whenever, Bob. So like two, three days go by, and then my family and I went to the pub quiz in our local town. We were doing a quiz, and I'm three pints in, haven't eaten much, and I get a phone call from an unknown number, and I have a feeling. I'm like, I think this is Bob Iger, but I'm drunk. <laughs> so I take the call. Uh, he then jokes about using Bob Iger for Disney trivia at the pub. He continues saying, I basically said thank you for the opportunity, and then he said, there is a world where we can make this work. Now, Holland then describes the back and forth between studio heads who were asking for his input, which he found odd. Yeah. Um, and he adds that while on the phone call, he wept. And uh, that he was very emotional because it felt like this was all coming to an end for him. How the hell do you say no to Tom Holland crying into the phone? It's got to pull on your heartstrings. Yeah. And I guess Bob Iger isn't just a, a robot. Because maybe it did. And somehow, when Tom Holland is on the phone crying into her ear, you got to make it work. And as we all know now, it did end up working out, and Spider-Man is still safe in the MCU for now. So, yeah, shoot your shot. Yeah, and then if all else fails, just weep desperately into the phone. Uh, yeah, I, I love this story because uh, it's just nice that uh, Tom Holland, he, he loves that character. He's he not really just in does. it for the money. He, he loves Spider-Man, and he wants Spider-Man to keep being in movies with all Spider-Man's friends. Out of all of the hugely successful actors involved in the MCU, he really seems like the one that uh, just is having the best time yeah. in the world. Just truly a kid and a kid at heart. He probably got his first paycheck after uh, Civil War. He's like, what? They're paying me? This is insane. Well, I, I would have just done it for free. Mm -hmm. I get to be Spider-Man. Plus, he, lo he loves it so much that they just use him for countless marketing initiatives. Oh, yeah, and he's, like, constantly accidentally spoiling things at yeah. Junkets. Hey, Tom, why don't you go tell him that you cried to, to Uncle yeah. Bobby on the phone? Yeah. They'll love it. They'll eat it up. And we did. Well, there you go. Good tip for anyone who gets fired from a job that they love. Just make sure to thank your boss for the opportunity and then get drunk off a couple of pale ales and lagers and then call them up and start crying. Yeah. What could go wrong? It worked for Tom Holland, and it can work for you. Sure. But speaking of work situations that aren't great, there's a new movie coming out called Bombshell about the behind-the-scenes situation at Fox News that played out back in 2016 involving anchors Gretchen Carlson and Megyn Kelly and their reports of sexual harassment on the job. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it would be next to impossible for the production designers attempting to recreate the Fox News headquarters for the film to get permission from the news organization themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, so they had to get a little bit crafty in order to make things appear as accurate as possible. Yeah, and one tactic in particular that was used in this whole thing was... Especially brilliant, but also very, very weird. Uh, also, it took some real smart thinking from the production designer to even come up with this idea. That's why they're, pro they're the professionals. Exactly. According to a report from Vulture, among a few other methods, the film's production designer, Mark Ricker, claims to have used a foot fetish website in order to accurately rebuild the Fox News offices. Quote, The female Fox News hosts all had to adhere to what costume designer Colleen Atwood called Roger Ailes' good girl but with a wink look tight dresses, and tall stiletto heels. Ailes had a clever kind of intuition about what people would notice, and especially, obviously, men, Atwood said. He branded that look, in a way. As a result, 
Pictures of the anchor's feet in high heels ended up on foot fetish sites, helping Ricker recreate the offices in painstaking detail. Yeah, that's totally what I was doing when I was on that foot. I planned it. This was my intention. Yeah. I would have never, never, you know, it's just, that's just how I had to Hey, do have it. you guys seen this foot fetish website? I think I could really use this. Uh, maybe I should get the premium membership. This is like uh, every day at the Machinima office. You're like, why are you looking at porn right now? It's like, it's part, part of, of the, the story. Job. It's part of the, look. I have no interest in this. It's just, it's part of the news. Doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. I'm not in here cranking my hog on work hours. Yeah. Now, Ricker added, 98% of the people who see the movie aren't going to know what the inner office looks like, but the other 2% of the audience will be the ones who work there, and they will know. I just wanted them to think, oh my god, how'd they get it so right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, turns out he was able to get it right, thanks in least part, <laughs> at least in part to the internet's insatiable lust for photos of famous women's feet. Mm -hmm. Totally research-based. Wasn't there just for research. It. any other reason. Yeah, it's certainly a unique way for a production designer to perfect their craft, but that, again, that's why they're the professionals. Yeah. I'm not out there designing production sets, because I wouldn't even think to start trawling foot fetish websites for a better look at the interiors of Fox News. I really offices. need an, an angle on this that no one else has ever seen before. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, before we get into the rest of today's episode, which includes news about Dr. Disrespect getting his own TV show, uh, the Snyder Cut shit being uh, confirmed for the thousandth time, and the revival of one of the best comedy shows of all time, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor, HoneyBook. If you started your own business, congrats, you're your own boss. It's great, but also a bit scary because you have to take on a plethora of different roles. If you don't do it, it doesn't get done, and if you need help doing it, you need HoneyBook. HoneyBook is an online business management tool that organizes your client communications, bookings, contracts, and invoices all in one place. It's perfect for freelancers, entrepreneurs, or small business owners that want to consolidate services they already use, like QuickBooks, Google Suite, Excel, and more. With HoneyBook, you can automate your busy work. They have easy-to-use templates for emails, proposals, brochures, and invoices. Simplify your to-do list and stay in control with HoneyBook. And right now, HoneyBook is offering our viewers 50% off when you visit HoneyBook.com newsdump. Payment's flexible, and this promotion applies whether you pay monthly or annually. So go to HoneyBook.com slash NewsDump for 50% off your first year. That is HoneyBook.com slash NewsDump, or just click the link in the description below for 50% off your first year. Now, back to the news. Mm -hmm. It's obvious that over the last few months, all the major live streaming sites have been at war with each other, as it's becoming more and more of an industry standard to offer the most popular talent very lucrative deals in order to stream exclusively on their sites. Mm -hmm. People like Ninja and Shroud have moved exclusively to Mixer in exchange for lots of money. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube picked up Courage, and PewDiePie still probably streams on that weird cryptocurrency site. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of the biggest streamers from Twitch have remained steadfast, choosing to remain on the site and continue to grow their audience in what is still the number one streaming site for gamers. One of those personalities is Guy Beam, a.k.a. Dr. Disrespect, who earlier this year signed an exclusive deal with one of the biggest entertainment talent agencies around, CAA. Mm -hmm. Very it's nice building. <laughs> it's in I've, Beverly Hills. I've been in that building like, like two or three times in the last ten years, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, it's like the, it's like where the Justice League would work. It's a yep. very nice building. It's very impressive. Yeah. Now, it's looking like that contract and remaining on Twitch, where his entire fan ba base exists, it's finally paying off for him in a big way because it was announced this week that Dr. Disrespect is getting his own TV show in partnership with Walking Dead creator Robert Kirkman's production company, Skybound Entertainment. As for what this series would entail, details are still sparse. It's very early on. But The Hollywood Reporter indicates that it would be a narrative scripted series focused on a fictional backstory of the Dr. Disrespect character and that it might end up being an animated series as opposed to live action. I'm going to guess that it's going to be animated because... I a lot just, easier to do stuff. I just don't see him taking weeks on end off from streaming and making like $50,000 a day to make a live action show when he could just as easily buy a fucking sound booth, put it in his house... And do it all from home. Yeah, that would be the uh, easiest option. Yeah. Low risk. If I had to... Maybe they're offering him an, such an insane amount of money, but I just don't see it. Yeah. The man... Like, if you look at his fucking donuts, it's, it's insane. <laughs> anyway, in a statement regarding this new series, Skybound co-founder and CEO David Alpert said the following. There are lots of incredibly talented streamers, but there's something special about what Guy has done in creating this character. We really believe there's a unique world around the Doctor. He added that... Dr. Disrespect is the largest figure to ever be in the video game space in the history of the world. Yeah. Which the, the Hollywood Reporter notes is a bit of 
on-brand marketing for the character's braggadocious persona. Mm -hmm. As for the doc himself, his goal, according to the press release, is still world domination, baby. Yeah. So there you go. A Dr. Disrespect TV show. All right. Coming eventually. I'm kind of shocked this meme has lasted this long. Hey, it'll be, uh, it'll be something. It'll be something. It certainly will be a thing. Anyways, here's your weekly Snyder Cut update. Uh. Yes, we are definitely going to keep reminding you that we've said for months now that you shouldn't be surprised when Warner Brothers eventually announces that the Snyder Cut is coming to their streaming platform, HBO Max. And we keep getting reaffirmed that our prediction is almost certainly going to come true because there's an obvious marketing blitz surrounding this whole thing, especially recently. Pretty much the entire cast at this point has acknowledged or tweeted about it. You have other people who are technically Warner Brothers employees tweeting about it. And now you have Zack Snyder talking about it once again. It doesn't seem uh, totally organic anymore. Yeah, so that leads us to this week's latest news about the cut because Zack Snyder himself has officially confirmed the existence of the Snyder Cut on the social media app Vero which is odd because he obviously has all of the other social media apps and is quite active on them. Isn't Vero the one that he's like invested in though? Uh, could be. I think he was like, cause he was posting like short films that he was making yeah. during that sort of quiet period of his career like two years ago. He was posting like clips on there, so well, I don't know. There's a, there's a couple things that are confirmed about Vero. Well, anyway, on that Vero app, which has, oh God, Russian developers and was founded by a Lebanese billionaire who was the CEO of a Saudi Arabian construction company. Everything's on a level. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, on that totally above board website, Zack Snyder posted a photo of reels of film with his initials on the label right above the text that reads, JL Director's Cut. Now, on top of the image itself is text that reads, is it real? Does it exist? Of course it does. Uh, so there you go. Yep. A picture of some metal crates. That's the movie. Yeah. Couldn't possibly be lying. <laughs> uh, they couldn't have written those labels at any other point in time. Nope. It would have only been more on the nose if they put the Snyder Cut or hashtag the Snyder Cut. Yeah. It's like how I, I own a tiger. It's in my house. And if you go to my house, you'll see on one of the doors, it says Tiger Room. Yeah. I have a tiger. And if you look in there and it's not in there, it's because my wife's out taking it for a walk. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, it should also be noted that according to the image, the running time of the Snyder Cut is a staggering 214 minutes or around three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I said recently, Martin Scorsese, he's broken the final broken glass the ceiling for long movies. Yeah. I mean, surely there's there's got to be a good movie in those three and a half hours, right? Yeah. Right? At least a couple cool scenes. Something shareable right? the kids will like on the Twitters. Well, or yeah. the Vero's. <laughs> we need we need you guys out there pounding pavement, sharing all the Snyder Cut clips on Vero. That'd be hilarious if he ends up releasing it on Vero oh, yeah, instead that'd be of HBO Max. Yeah, this is all Saudi Arabia's fault. Yeah. Well, anyway, re regardless of which platform it ends up, you'll just I guess have to wait because it's definitely going to come out. And if Almost I had certainly. to if I had to bet on it, it's not going to be that much better, if at all better, yeah, yeah. than the movie we all got. Yes, it will be the Justice League movie, which isn't very good at all, but a different version of that, which probably won't be very good. In fact, if we're going by like shittiness per minute, it has the potential to be even worse. Yeah. But just by virtue of being significantly longer. Where's the Snyder cut of Batman v Superman? That's what I want to know. I actually made a much better cut, but Warner Brothers didn't <laughs> want to release it. They said, give these idiots the slop first. The we'll slop put, cut. Yeah, we'll put the... Uh, the real cut on HBO Max. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes perfect sense. Like, mm -hmm. Warner, they're like, okay, finally, we've got all of the Justice League on film for the first time ever. Zach just submitted his cut, which is perfect and beautiful. Mm -hmm. We don't want to release that, though. No. No, let's put that in the vault. Let's fire Zach. Let's bring in Joss Whedon for no fucking reason. And let's reshoot a bunch of the movie to make it way worse yeah. than the one that was originally submitted. Well, that way we can profit off of it twice. Yeah. This was it the makes long perfect cut. sense. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, speaking of new streaming services, what the fuck is Quibi? Yeah, I know what it is. Quibi Criminal. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no. Uh, and why is Quibi the only way that we'll be able to watch the recently announced all new episodes of Reno 911? Yes, you heard us right. One of the best comedy shows of the past two decades, Reno 911, it is being revived, rebooted, released. 
And that's fantastic news. We can't wait to check it out. I'm excited. I yeah. love that show. Yeah, it was a really good show. But the only way that any of us are going to be able to do so is by downloading an app called Quibi. But <laughs> Quibi. <laughs> in order to watch it. So, uh, so again, what is Quibi? Well, Quibi, which is actually apparently announced Qua Qui Bi because it's short for quick bites. Oh, yeah. I wake Quibi. up in the morning. I do a little Qui Bi <laughs> just to, like, get the blood pumping. Yeah, there's a... You know, there's a chance that people are just going to call this Quibi instead of Quibi because Quibi, or whatever the fuck it's pronounced, it sounds stupid. But the whole name in general is stupid. It's a terrible name. It is a yet-to-be-released app, and it's going to be a paid streaming service that focuses entirely on short-form video for mobile devices, both uh, in portrait mode and landscape. Oh, no. And it's said that all episodes are going to be 10 minutes or less. Uh, there are a lot of problems with this. This is Jeffrey Katzenberg's app, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> so, yes, to the, to the problems of this. Uh, why does it have to be short form only? Uh, don't they realize that uh, dozens of these mobile exclusive streaming apps have already failed, even with big name productions and talent involved in them? And uh, why do they think that people are going to pay for specifically short form content? Um, yeah. The, I've seen no less than, I guess, half a dozen exclusive mobile apps that have huge entertainment names behind them mm -hmm. completely crash and burn. Yeah. I mean, and this, yeah. <laughs> I just want... There's I, no reason that, to believe that this is a good idea. I want Quibi, uh, or however it's pronounced, to, to tell us to do a show because they're throwing insane money around. Yeah. Yeah. There, it, I, I will gladly make a show that has no one ever see it. Yeah. Just... Throw it into the fucking ocean. That's the problem, though. They're getting huge, huge names uh, to do all this stuff, which, I mean, that's, uh, you know, yeah, certainly get Yeah, just like fucking CISO did for like a year and a half before they ran out of money. What was the Verizon one? A Go90. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that had a lot of stuff behind it, too. Yeah. I mean, before the that, power of Samsung a multi, Milk. Yeah, multi-billion dollar company Verizon couldn't get it to work. Yeah. Maybe Katzenberg can. He ran Disney. He's done a lot of, uh, he, he's a veteran. Yeah. Anyway, for now, we'll just put a hold on our multiple predictions of why this thing is already doomed and just let you know that, at the very least, everyone involved in its productions is going to be making a decent amount of money because the platform was founded by industry veteran and former chairman of Walt Disney Studios, Jeffrey Katzenberg. Mm -hmm. And right out of the gate, they're taking a gigantic gamble by pushing over a billion dollars into original content in just its first year alone. That's a billion dollars with a B in their first year, which is next year. Hey, content. So regardless of whether or not this takes off, everyone in Hollywood that gets the call to develop something for Kwai Bai should happily bleed this company dry. Get paid, baby. Kwai uh, Bai. You have to remember it's Quick Bites. So Kwai... Uh, um, fuck. Anyways, Stadia Stadia. Kwai Bai. Kwai Bai. Kwai Bai. It's going to be a pretty tough sell for people to pay money for this app, which so far has two options announced for viewing content. Five bucks a month uh, allows you to view whatever the fuck this thing's called's content, but you have to watch ads with it. What? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's the first one. Uh, for eight dollars a month, you get the ad-free option. Oh my god! Like this is just CISO all over again. Yeah. And CISO was like, it was like three dollars towards the end there, and you actually got like access to like a bunch of old content, like entire series. Yeah. Ah, jeez, okay. For many of their upcoming titles, it appears as though these things will be released in small chunks, which they call chapters, basically like episodes of a season, except even shorter. And now, obviously, there are going to be some exclusives on this service that could definitely pull in customers, most notably for us being the previously mentioned Reno 911 reboot. Uh, should they, this one's going to be Reno 911, where the oh, whole crew no. goes down and tries to solve the mystery. Are the episodes going to be 10 minutes long? Yeah, the whole point of this thing is short form, under it 10 minutes. It sounds like Jeffrey Katzenberg paid like $10,000 to go to some fucking like industry seminar on yep. understanding Generation Z yeah. and just you well, know, walked out of there absolutely sure of how the, the his new business plan and how successful it would well, be. Well, this whole business plan seems like it was cooked up five years ago and they're just now getting to it. Yeah. Because... Yeah, this is these are all bullet points in like a fucking deck that I'm sure we had to watch it like a machinima stand-up in 2013. Yeah. Like who's going to sit on... Keep videos under 10 Listen, minutes. we could be wrong. Rarely we are, but sometimes we are. I just can't imagine, like, pulling out my phone. First of all, pulling out my phone to watch all this content. And even if it was on something like Roku or smart TVs, like, just watching 10 minutes of something and being like, all right, well, yeah. back to the other apps. Yeah. No, I don't know. Uh, well, but here, th there is really, really good stuff. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, everyone's getting paid. 
and there Good. will be content. And it, it eventually, if this crashes and burns, hopefully we'll be able to see it in other places. Yeah. But uh, here's what else is scheduled to release on. Uh, hold on, let me think of it. Quibi. 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 After it launches uh, next April. There's a twice daily news show from both NBC and ESPN called Daily Essentials, a horror anthology series called Fifty States of Fear from Jason Blum, Antoine Fuqua, Guillermo del Toro, and Sam Raimi. Ooh. A travel series from Joe Jonas based on his Instagram account. That one gets the kids in the door. Uh, a comedic thriller starring and produced by Kevin Hart called Action Scene. A docuseries about defamed NBA owner Donald Sterling called Blackballed. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I know. That's Consider me a subscriber. That's what I'm saying. They got some good stuff. <laughs> I'm going to check out the trial. But uh, Oh, I forgot about Don Sterling. That yeah. shit was great. Uh, a Judge Judy-style courtroom show starring Chrissy Teigen called Chrissy's Court. Mm -hmm. uh, Sci-fi drama starring Don Cheadle called Don't Look Deeper. A car stunt series starring Idris Elba and Ken Block. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like Ken Block. An unscripted show based off of female WWE wrestlers. A show about Snapchat and its creator Evan Spiegel called Frat Boy Genius. Blah. A survival reality show starring Zac Efron and his brother called Kill the Efrons. A game show from Ron Funches. A horror series from Steven Spielberg called Spielberg's After Dark. And a few others. Yeah, so the interesting thing about the Spielberg one is that you can only watch it after the sun goes down. That's part of the pitch. I remember hearing about this. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot okay. of talent involved. Um, a lot of money involved. Everybody's going to get paid. I just don't know. Call me a skeptic. I don't think this one's going to work out. Yeah, but you know, imagine like, like how much, how many people you would have to sign up consistently to make back just your initial a billion, billion dollars. dollars. Yeah. yeah, that's. Um, I don't have my calculator. It's a lot on of me, signups, but I don't see the math really working here. Yes, but eventually they'll make it all back when the app fails and they get to license it to Netflix and HBO Max. So what would that be? Would that be? Uh, like 200 million subscribers at the base subscriber level. I Let me actually do the math. I think it's 200, it's 200 million times $5 would be a billion dollars. So 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, divided by... Let's say 8 for the most expensive option. 8. 125 million at 8. So at they, the $8. they need 125 million subscribers. At the top level. At the top level. Yeah. And Netflix has what, like... 200 total over the course of uh, a decade of... Uh, instant streaming, but two yeah, decades of I just uh, I don't see it. I, you, you need like a thousand times the number of subscribers of your your average uh, top reference, tier subscription service. For reference, Disney Plus has like 15 million right now. Yeah, for the well, same price. Uh, my prognosis is not you know based off my math, not the best prognosis. But the best of luck to everyone, and I I'm glad to see you all. Getting I gotta paid. get Daddy Katzenberg on the phone because to me this sounds like a. Uh, Hey guys, you want to get together and make a bunch of bullshit and burn just a billion dollars in VC money? Yeah, I, I, I respect it. Let us in the door. Yeah, yeah, so a bunch of these actually, they sound like good ideas. Sure. But again, the struggle is going to be getting people to sign up for the service, or at the very least, getting people to continue paying for it well after their free trial has expired. I'm definitely getting a free trial once the entire Reno 911 <sighs> chapters are online. Yeah. That's when you do it. No one signs up for the free trial of CBS. Uh, all access to watch the first episode of that Star Trek show. No. No, you sign up at the no. end and watch it all. Anyways, for trailers this week, uh, there were actually a few good ones, believe it or not. The new James Bond film looks like it has the potential to be fun. Yeah. And um, Black Widow is, uh, you got Black Widow in the movie Black Widow. Yeah, so there you go. If, yep. Something <laughs> for everyone. For, congrats, Black Widow fans. Mm -hmm. If you're really looking for something to watch, though, after you've finished with this video, the second season of Joe Para Talks With You premieres at midnight. On Friday, or I don't know, soon. How do you well, check local listings? Do you consider Friday night at midnight to be Friday night still, or is that technically Saturday morning? I do personally. Yeah, it, it does. Makes more it sense. does get a little dicey though if you're. But yeah, yeah. On on Friday, if you wait till the very end of Friday, yeah, when the clock strikes midnight, that's when Joe Para talks with you, uh, is going to premiere. Yeah. On. Uh, Adult Swim. Yes. We, we cannot recommend the show enough. It is nice, it's calm, it's relaxing, and it's hilarious. Make sure to check it out. Yes. I believe the first season is still free to watch on AdultSwim.com. Well, you have 10 hours of him talking to you to sleep oh, on yeah. the Adult Swim YouTube page. So. Yeah. Uh, he did a very delightful interview with Stephen Colbert. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I don't know how much of it's a character, but he is very good at 
at being that guy. I I think the part about how he has a girlfriend was real, and he, he yeah. struggled with saying like whether he should stay in character or yeah. actually acknowledge that she exi- exists. Yeah, there were a few parts where you could kind of tell. He's like, he's... I'm gonna feel bad if I if I say on national TV that I do not have a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Uh, anyways, that's a great interview. That that's uh, you can just search that on the YouTube search tab up there. You know, whatever. Uh, anyways, uh, if you're a po- or if you're a Patreon supporter or a YouTube member of this channel, we have an exclusive podcast out that you can listen to. A brand new one. Uh, if you want to become a Patreon supporter, links below. If you want to become a YouTube member, hit the join button. Support the channel. We thank you very much for doing that. Yeah, and thank you to everyone who bought merch. Yes, thank you so much if you bought merch. The rest I, of you, it's too late. Sorry, but uh... yeah, I think if you go there, you can still get like the old uh, logo tee. Oh, okay. So there's something there. But thank you to everyone who bought from the latest drop. We really do appreciate it. Uh, if you want to check out other shows here, we have a brand new episode of Tech Newsday and an episode where we talk about weird holiday ads and Pete Davidson's $1 million NDA. Is it worth it? Find out over there. Bye. Bye.